Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be talking about next property of bounded self-adjoint linear operator. And now this property deals about the spectrum of a given bounded self-adjoint linear operator. Now in this case, uh, the theorem here tells us that if T is given to be some bounded self-adjoint linear operator, which is defined on a complex Hilbert space H, then in that case, the spectrum here is a real quantity. So that means all the members here in which are present in the spectrum of T has to be real. So you see, this is a very powerful result. If you know that your operator T that is linear, that is self adjoint, self adjoint, and that is bounded. If you know all these things, about your operator with the, the problem which you are dealing with, then you already know that it's spectrum that has to be a real thing, right? So we will prove this thing. So here we shall make use of the previous result that we had used and we show that if we assume lambda as some complex number alpha plus iota beta, where both alpha and beta are real and uh, we initially assume that this beta is non-zero quantity. Uh, what we are doing, we are taking lambda as alpha plus iota beta. And we will prove that if beta is non-zero, then that beta has to be a member of this resolvent set. If it is zero, so that means lambda is just equal to alpha only. In that case, this lambda is would be a member of the spectrum. So that means whenever we have lambda as real quantity, it has to be a member of the spectrum of T. And whenever we have lambda as complex quantity, then it has to be a member of the resolvent set of T. So this is the story here, right? So here we show that lambda is equal to alpha plus iota beta, where uh, beta is not equal to zero must belong to the resolvent set of T. Uh, if we prove this thing, we will prove that the spectrum of T is a subset of the real uh, space. So that means all the members here are real numbers. So now for every member which is non-zero in the given Hilbert space, we have the inner product of T lambda X with X as equal to now you can open up this t lambda, you can write this t lambda as t minus lambda i. So you have t, uh, the inner product of tx with x minus lambda times the inner product of x with x. Now because both of these inner products, they are real quantity because t is self adjoint according to the property that we have reviewed in the video for self adjoint operators. Both these things, they are real in nature. And moreover, if we take the closure of the inner product of T lambda X with X, we now what, what do we have? We have this thing as equal to the inner product of T X with X minus lambda conjugate the inner product of X with X. Now this, this is simple calculation. You should know at this stage that how to perform these kind of computations. So now because we have equation one and equation two, and you can see we have this quantity and this quantity as common in both these equations, we can subtract equation one and equation two. So in the left hand side, we would have the inner product of the closure of T lambda X, not the closure, but the conjugate of T lambda X with X minus the inner product of T lambda X with X that is equal to lambda conjugate minus lambda times the inner product of x with x. And what is the inner product of x with x? It is equal to the norm of x squared, right? And what is lambda? Lambda we assume to be alpha plus iota beta. So what would be lambda conjugate? It would be alpha minus iota beta. So when you subtract both of this, you have two iota beta here. And moreover, in a similar manner, because both of them, they are also complex quantities. So when you subtract one with another, one is the conjugate, another one is not the conjugate. So in that case, you would get minus two times two iota times imaginary part of this thing, right? Uh, so uh, that means you ha finally have minus two iota 
imaginary part of the inner product of t lambda x with x that is equal to 2 iota beta the norm of x square now uh, this 2 and 2 cancels with each other iota and iota cancels with each other and uh, you can uh, then take the absolute values on both sides so that you have the absolute value of beta here and uh, the norm of x squared as such and on the uh, right uh, uh, right hand side you have this the absolute value of imaginary value of the inner product of t lambda x with x now this thing the uh, mod modulus of imaginary part is obviously less than equal to the complex uh, the absolute value of the complex number itself this is according to the property of complex numbers and this modulus the absolute value is less than equal to the norm of t lambda x with x so because we ha initially had considered x to be a non-zero member so therefore we can take uh, we can divide by the norm of x it is also a non-zero quantity so this one power here uh, and this term here is cancelled out so we have the absolute value of beta here the norm of x less than equal to the norm of t lambda x now from this result if beta is not equal to zero in that case lambda uh, this beta would act as a uh, number c which is a positive quantity so this is uh, this would provide us with the condition that c norm of x less than equal to the norm of t lambda x and according to the result that we have already studied in the previous videos this lambda would be a member of the resolvent set of t according to the previous result so that means if beta is not equal to zero so we had this condition and according to the previous result this lambda would be a member of the resolvent set here if this beta is equal to 0 that means uh, it would now not belong to the resolvent set and if it is not a member of the resolvent set it obviously has to be present in its complement and what is the complement of the resolvent set that is the given spectrum set so in that case if we consider lambda to be alpha plus iota beta then if this beta is equal to 0 this lambda is obviously a real quantity and if this is a real quantity it is present in the spectrum set of the given self adjoint linear operator as we have stated in the given uh, theorem and we have proved the same so i hope you understood this result well well that is it for this video thank you for watching